I've been aware of the Apple Prize for a long time, obviously. Uh, my first actual relationship with the Apple Prize was in 2019 when, when Karen won the prize. I came and gave the popular maths lecture. And now, this time, I'm back to host the announcement. Michelle's research is very interesting because it's looking at some quite abstract bits of mathematics. I mean, higher dimensional spaces and measure theory and these things are complicated subjects, but it's nice because on one hand, Michelle reduces it to very fundamental concepts, like is always keen to get to the most base uh, relationships and then build back up from there, which I find very pleasing. And at the same time, even though it's very abstract uh, proofs and derivations and, and results, they have surprisingly applied applications. And often, I mean, some of these fantastic Arbor Prize winners work in very, very theoretical abstract mathematics. And so it's nice to have a winner where you can just, you can point at randomness and Gaussian distributions and say, you know, their work is helping us understand these. I got into teaching because when I was at university studying, well, I didn't have a career plan, so I didn't know what I was going to do after university. But while I was at university, I started doing tutoring for students. And I'd always enjoyed talking about mathematics. And so I was like, you know what, maybe I'd enjoy teaching it. And so I got to the end of my degree and decided to try teaching, because I figured you would discover very quickly if you enjoy it or not. And so I did the one year postgraduate teaching diploma. And the moment I had my first placement in a school as part of that one year, I really enjoyed it. And so I realized teaching, while hard work, is very rewarding and a lot of fun. Yeah, everything I've done has been mathematics related. I think that's just because my career has changed a little bit at a time. So I went from teaching to working for universities. And then while I was working at universities, I started getting into performance. So when I was at university, I had made short films and I'd written for like the student paper. So I was, I, I'd done comedy writing at university and I've been teaching for a couple of years and I kind of missed that. And so I started doing stand-up comedy in London, which was a huge amount of fun. But then, I mean, and you think that, oh, that's going to be different to the maths because I was working in universities at the time. But the maths couldn't help, like it, it, it came through because I just enjoyed talking about it so much. And so now I'm very, very fortunate that I can still do performance, stand up about mathematics, but because of that, I do YouTube videos uh, and write books. So I'm very fortunate that I can do all different types of communication, but it is, is ultimately mass based I'd always had an interest in errors in mathematics because I think it's a very useful way to both get people's attention so I'd been collecting examples of, of math mistakes for years. And when Penguin, the publisher that I, I write books for, they came to me to, to ask what I'd like to do my next book about. And they specifically said, what could you do which would have a very wide appeal? And I was like, well, you know what? I love math mistakes. I like them because when math goes wrong, that's when you see what it was doing in the first place. So a lot of mass goes unnoticed. It powers our modern society, and you don't really notice it in the background until it goes wrong. And, and then from my point of view, I've now got the excuse to talk about what the mass was doing and then what happened when it went wrong. So it's an excuse to talk about why mass is so useful. But it works well as a book, and I've done a lot of YouTube videos on this, because it's entertaining. People like stories about things going wrong. They like other people's mistakes. And so, and it's a nice human story. So all the stories involve obviously people using and misusing mathematics. And so I thought it was a nice way to tell some human stories about maths while explaining why it's so useful. Yeah, the problem with mathematics is some of it is very abstract. You need to do a lot of learning and reading and research to understand some of the concepts. And even then, that's temporary. Like, you don't think about it for a while, and you've got to start again when you go back to it. My view, I view the view of doing mass communication as providing a shortcut for other people. So I will put the time and effort in as much as I can to get my head around these mass concepts. And then I will think, what's a shortcut for people to get, not a full understanding, but a sense, like, 
how would they get an approximation of what it's like to know and to understand and to use that bit of mathematics? And so then I just think, okay, well, what's the, 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 the shortest path between knowing nothing about it to having a rough idea of what it's like? For me, mathematics, I, I describe maths as finding and using patterns. I think that's the essence of mathematics. And the, the using patterns is, is great, and I'm a big fan of applications of mathematics, but for me, the real joy is the finding. When there's like two different concepts or, or, or situations in mathematics, and then suddenly you realize they're the same. And you're like, oh, they, they seem unrelated, but yet you now know there's some deep, logic or truth or pattern or structure that joins them together and those unexpected links for me are the most pleasing part of maths. Yeah, different ways of communicating maths have different strengths and weaknesses and I would get bored if I didn't, if I just did one, I feel like. So I switch between them because you take writing a book takes a lot of time and focus and so I do fewer videos, but then once the book's done, I'm back making way more videos. And in a book, you can get more of a run-up. So when you're making a video, and don't get me wrong, I make some long YouTube videos, but in theory, each video is a, is a short, self-contained idea or concept. And you can't assume too much in terms of what people may already know or understand before they get to that video. Whereas a book, you know that they've hopefully read the rest of the book. And so you've got a couple hundred pages to build up concepts and lay down ideas that you then know the people reading have, have covered. And so you can do long form mathematics where you have to have more bits in place before the, the payoff or the reveal. Whereas obviously making a video is, you got much more visual, you can experiment more with how you do the communication and you will sometimes reach an audience who wouldn't buy or read a book about mathematics. And so I, I, I think I would both be bored without doing both, but also I think we would be missing out on important aspects of mass communication if we didn't have the long books and the short, exciting videos. Yeah. My advice for people who want to get into mass communication is do it. I mean, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I've been waiting for young people to do, like replace me. <laughs> Hurry up, I'm, I'm tired. I've done this for so long. But I think my best bit of advice is to start doing it. So this is true of teaching and is true of stand-up comedy and it's true of most forms of communication. There are shortcuts by studying it, but you have to do it. It's a learnt skill. It has to be practiced. But the only way to get good at communicating mathematics is to do it a lot in front of different audiences. So even if you're not doing maths talks or, you, or what, just start, do it, start making videos, start doing presentations to people, and that experience is the only way you'll really improve.